Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video we're going to be thinking about how you can kind of really mobilize a baseline and just by getting some movement into the baseline kind of transform something that could be fairly plain into something that's actually much more interesting. So I'm going to take a few bars of the UK national anthem as our model. So here's six measures of the UK national anthem. Okay, well, that's often something we hear in the UK, as you can imagine, and that's often how it's played. It's just kind of block chords, and it's pretty kind of stately stuff, which I suppose fits with the thing. But what happens if you want to kind of liven it up a little bit? Well, you can't really be messing about with the melody, especially if people are actually trying to sing this thing, but maybe there's something you can do with the bass line. So what can you do in order to get that baseline moving? Well, one thing you can do is to jump to another note of the same chord. So you could look at this first chord and you could say, well, that's called one in G major, a chord of G major. All I need to do is jump the bass line to another note of the chord. I could even just jump to another G. So instead of just playing this chord, I do this jump down the octave. I could jump to another note of the chord like a D or a B. That's one way of doing it. So just moving to another note of the same chord. Or I can use these things called inessential notes. So these inessential notes, passing notes or passing tones, depending on how you've learned those, auxiliary notes or neighbor tones, depending on how you've learned those. And they're really the essentials in kind of things you can use to get a bass line moving. So it doesn't take too much to think, am I moving to another note of the same chord or am I using one of those two devices? If it's a passing note or a passing tone, it's got to move by step between two other notes. So we're going by step. Now there's an immediate possibility at the beginning here because you see you've got G followed by E. If a part in the, if the bass line's moving by a third, you can easily just stick in the note in between and do that. Because if you do that, that's a passing note or a passing tone. It's moved down by step from G. And if I put an F sharp in there, it's moving on by step to E. So there's the possibility for writing a passing note or a passing tone. So let's start thinking about doing some elaboration of the bass line. As soon as you see the bass line moving in thirds, start thinking passing notes, passing tones. So what we could do is do this. So just by turning these into quavers or eighth notes, you see that gives me a passing note or a passing tone. I can do the same thing here. So already that first measure, the first bar started to wake up because originally it was this. Now it's going to do this. And suddenly you think, oh wow, actually that's got a bit of movement into the bass. I can do the same thing a couple of measures later, a couple of bars later, because you see the bass is falling in thirds again. So I could do these little passing notes or passing tones. And so in that third measure, that's quite handy, isn't it? Yeah, oh, that's given us a bit of life there, isn't it? Okay, well, if I look at the end of the first bar, the first measure, I'm going from C to D in the bass. So the trouble is those are next door to each other. So I can't use a passing note or a passing tone. The only one I could do would be to use a chromatic passing note or passing tone as a C sharp. Now that's okay, but we've got C natural in the tenor. And so you don't want C sharp in the bass while you've got C natural in the tenor, you know. Bit of a clash, isn't it? Now, could you fix that by changing the tenor note? Well, you could if you were desperate to put 
a C sharp there, you could say I'll have an A in the tenor and maybe do that. That's one way you could do it. If you don't want to make life too complicated, one thing you could do is just jump to another harmony note, another chord tone. So because this is an A minor chord, just moving the bass from C down to A just means you've gone from the first inversion of the A minor chord down to the root position. So in the first measure, we've got two passing notes, two passing tones, and then we've just hopped to another harmony note, another chord tone. Oh, suddenly things are mobilizing very nicely, aren't they? Now then, when we come to the second bar, the second measure, that's a little bit more complicated, isn't it? Because what are we going to do here? Well, there are things we could do, like at the end of this measure, this bar, we could say, well, I'll just do that trick again that we've just done at the end of the first measure, the first bar, just move to another chord tone, another harmony note. So instead of just using this chord before we go on there, I do this. It's kind of working quite nicely. But what do I do at the beginning of measure two or bar two? Because that D is going to E. And furthermore, we've got this rhythm, haven't we? A dotted note followed by a short note. Oh, what can we do with that? Maybe this is an opportunity to use an auxiliary note or a neighbor tone. Okay, let me show you what I mean by this. When you use an auxiliary note or a neighbor tone, you start with a note that's printed, you go up one and you come back. So that's an upper auxiliary or an upper neighbor tone. Or you go down a note and you come back a lower auxiliary or a lower neighbor tone. Now, I'm going to suggest we use a lower one here. Why am I suggesting that? Because this e note E is one note above this D. So if I use an upper auxiliary note here or an upper neighbor tone and then come back to D. I'm going to go D, D twice and it starts to sound like uh, emergency services on the move. So we don't want to do that, do we really? However, if I use a lower neighbor tone or a lower auxiliary note, well, it's going to make for a more varied routine. So how's about we do this? So I turn this into quavers and get rid of this dot and then I turn that into quavers, so you do that, okay? Now, that probably still doesn't sound quite right. So it's gonna sound like this. That's all right, isn't it? But the reason why this second note doesn't sound quite right is if I use that C natural there, it turns this chord into a dominant seventh. It's now a five seven in its last inversion. The minute we do that, it kind of wants to resolve properly. So that seventh in the bass wants to resolve downwards by step. And this F sharp needs to go up to G, which it sort of does, but it does it, you know, a, a note too late. So is there a way around this? Well, there is. What we can do is to treat this as a C sharp. So it's what we call a chromatic lower auxiliary note or a chromatic lower neighbor tone. And that gets us away from this turning into a dominant seventh because it becomes a D major chord. It's a kind of one in D major as well as a five in G major. We just have a hint of D major with the C sharp, but we don't get into having to resolve a dominant seventh properly. And it gives us a little bit of harmonic color. We kind of hear, having done that, that there's a sort of sense of, oh, we've just sort of slipped into D major by using a C sharp in the bass, but the D major chord is chord five in G major. So when I go on to G major, well, we're, we're back using chord one in G major. So it kind of works quite nicely. Now, can you see what we've done? We've really kind of mobilized those first three measures, those first three bars. So what does this sound like? Okay, great. Well, we're on the move, aren't we? So now we've got to think, how are we going to get from this C to this D? Well, again, we could be in that situation that we met back here, where you could think, well, C, D, 
neighboring notes. So I can't use a passing note or a passing tone unless I use a chromatic one. So I could think, oh, I'll tell you what, let's have a C sharp in here. Now, the only problem with that is we're back with the previous situation we met, where if you have a C sharp there, you've got C natural in the melody. So there's going to be a nasty little clash. And we get something called false relations. Oh, you don't want to meet false relations. Uh, so C natural there, C sharp there. It doesn't sound very good, does it? So is there something else we can do? Well, we could go to another chord tone, another harmony note. Well, it's a C major chord, so could we jump up to E? Well, I suppose we could. It's not the best solution because then the bass actually goes from E to D and the alto goes E to D, so you get consecutive octaves. And if we have an E there, well, that's doubling the major third, which is something we try not to do. So if we kind of energize this bass line by doing something that actually makes the harmony worse in some way, well, we've got to ask ourselves why we're doing that. Can we do something with a bass line that actually makes the harmony work perhaps in an even more interesting way? Well, here's my suggestion for this, that we allow the bass to drop down to A. Now then, some people would be looking at this and thinking, well, what are you doing now? Because if you make it into an A, I thought this was supposed to be a C major chord. So if this is supposed to be a C major chord, A is not in the chord. Okay, well, you could say it's a sort of C6 chord, but it's not really that, is it? Because you've got A in the bass. But what's now happened to the chord? I've taken the C major chord. By adding this third in the bass, I've turned that C major chord into this kind of A minor 7 chord. So I've taken chord 4 in the key of G, and I've turned it into 2-7. So in fact, it just warms up the chord. So there's the ordinary chord 4. And with that A, it becomes a 2 7. What a nice chord, isn't it? So we've added a bass note that's changed the harmony for the first time, but we've kind of warmed up the harmony by taking an ordinary triad. Three notes of that triad belong to the seventh chord that's two chords below it. So I've taken chord four, two chords below that is chord two. So chord four becomes chord two seven. But three notes are common to chord four and to two seven. So it's a lovely smooth transition from one chord to the next. But that A in the bass kind of warms up the chord because we take an ordinary diatonic chord four and turn it into a two seven. So that's a nice little touch, isn't it? Now, on we go to the next bar, the next measure, and when you look at this, this has got the same rhythmic challenge as we met up here. So we're back in this lark again, and we're going from D to D sharp, so that's just a semitone. So what on earth are we going to do this time? Well, how about we kind of take our little trick from earlier on, and we use this chromatic lower auxiliary note, or lower neighbor tone, and then we come back to the D, but this time we simply move on chromatically to D sharp. So in fact, we get this nice semitone movement in the bass. So when we listen to this bar, this measure, ah, actually works quite nicely, doesn't it? Now, when we come to the end of this bar, this measure, we're in this E minor chord. Well, you know, we're back to something we did at the beginning, aren't we? There are lots of things you could do. You could bounce to another note of the E minor chord, but the bass is falling a third. So how's about we just fill in the gap between? Of course, that's now going to be a D natural, isn't it? So that just allows us to get some movement out of the end of that measure, that bar. On to the next bar, we've got an A minor chord in its first inversion. Well, again, I could use a chromatic passing note or passing tone, but false relations are back, C natural in the tenor, no thanks. So I could just jump down to the root note of that A minor chord. And that works quite nicely, doesn't it? And then what am I gonna do? I've got two Ds in the bass. Oh, what do you do when you've got a repeated note? If you've got a repeated note, well, the easiest thing to do is to use a neighbor tone or an auxiliary note. So, you know, I could go up one, or I could go down one, or I could go down one chromatically. 
Aha, I think that's probably the best solution. So I'm using a chromatic lower auxiliary note or a chromatic lower neighbor tone. How do I get away with that C sharp there? Well, it's anticipating again a chord of D major, isn't it? So C sharp belongs to D major. So even though this is the dominant chord of G major, it's also the tonic chord of D major, and that C sharp just helps to flag up a little bit of color in that direction. But we're straight back on this D major chord, which is the dominant chord of G major, and it brings us home quite nicely at the end of the phrase. Um, now, what are you gonna do at the end of this? I mean, you could go a bit bonkers here, and you could think, well, I'll just come down the scale like this, and then I'll have to turn that into semiquavers or 16th notes. You could do that, but we haven't used those 16th notes or semiquavers anywhere else. So possibly the best thing to do here is just leap an octave. And that works particularly well because we're coming into a cadence here. It's a 5-1 cadence. And often at a cadence, you have a bass line that goes hot, cross, buns. It goes dominant, dominant, tonic. So that's what we've got there. Okay, now then, let's see how this whole thing pieces together. I'm going to play the original thing. In other words, just the notes printed in black. That's how King Charles hears it many times a day. But would he prefer to hear it with this rather more exciting bass line? We'll have to ask him. I think if I were the king, which is never going to happen, I prefer it with that moving bass line, don't you? Anyway, just using this as a model for something, because lots of people are able to write a melody, are able to put chords under it, but then they say, well, it just sounds a bit kind of drab, really. It's just going chord, chord, chord. And Sometimes you can solve that by energizing your melody in some way, but sometimes you just want the melody to be the melody. So can you energize something in the lower parts? And if you want to do that, the bass line is often the best way of doing it. So do you see what we've done there? We've either jumped to another note of the same chord, or we've jumped to another note that makes the chord richer by slightly turning it into something else, or we've used a passing note, a passing tone, or we've used an auxiliary note, otherwise known as a neighbor tone. And then we've added a bit of spice by using the odd chromatic note, just to give it a bit more color. So I hope that's kind of explored with you some useful techniques that you might be able to apply to your own writing. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, you might like to go to our website, www.mmcourses.co.uk. And if you want to know more about harmony and how to deal with the things that we've been talking about, click on courses, have a look at our advanced theory course, or have a look at our keyboard harmony course. Both of those will empower you to be able to do more of this. Lots more there while you're on the website, www.mmcourses.co.uk.